acromegaly is the topic. And acromegaly essentially involves the pituitary gland and the hormone called growth hormone. This is a condition that occurs when a person has a pituitary tumor. And that tumor will then secrete excessive quantities of growth hormone. I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Both of these are endocrine glands. They live inside your brain and they secrete hormones. The hypothalamus secretes a hormone called GHRH, which is growth hormone releasing hormone. And its effect on the pituitary is that it helps to increase growth hormone levels. The hypothalamus has another hormone called GHIH. And this is growth hormone inhibiting hormone. And its role is to do the opposite, to decrease growth hormone levels. So it would do that. Now GHIH has another name sometimes called somatostatin. So keep all of this in mind. Growth hormone is your main player. You have two hormones that are involved in its regulation. Those two come from the hypothalamus. There's two terms that are thrown around and oftentimes people wonder if they are indeed the same thing. So you have gigantism and acromegaly. Are they the same? The answer is they both involve increased level of growth hormone, but the difference is related to when the growth hormone increase happens initially. So what you have to know is did this growth hormone increase happen before the closure of the epiphysis or after? And if you remember, when a child grows, it will grow eventually until the epiphyseal plates are fused and then after that there's no more growth. So that's what we're referring to. If this growth hormone increase happens initially before the closure of the epiphysis, you will have a condition known as gigantism. And that will essentially make the individual very tall. If the growth hormone starts to increase after the closure of the epiphysis, then this is a condition known as acromegaly. The individual will not grow in terms of height because that's not possible anymore because the epiphyseal plates are fused. But there will be quite a few other abnormalities such as change in facial features and several other things that I will talk about. So let's talk a little bit about the symptoms and signs of acromegaly. First, Remember, this happens after the epiphyseal plates are fused, so we're talking anywhere between age 20 to 40. And some of the symptoms are as follows. The facial features will become coarse. The patient's hands and feet will begin to swell. And what that will do is require the patient to have larger gloves, shoes, and also will have to change their ring size. So here is a comparison between a hand of somebody that has acromegaly and a normal hand and as you can see the individual with acromegaly does indeed have a swelling which would lead to the requirement of having larger gloves or a larger ring if they wear a ring. because of the increased sweat glands. Next physical exam finding is very characteristic. It has to do with the jaw. In particular, the jaw will start to protrude. And I have a photo of that. So here's an individual where you can see the jaw is protruding. The mandible 
has grown larger. So it's actually a very prominent physical exam finding. Also very important is the patient's voice will become very husky. And because this is a tumor of the pituitary causing all of this, the patient will also experience headaches and vision loss because the pituitary tumor can compress the optic chiasm and that can lead to visual problems. Diagnosis. Imaging is definitely required because this is a tumor. And one thing I wanted to point out really quickly is that sometimes when you do the CT or MRI, there is no tumor. So if there's no tumor, then how did the patient develop increased growth hormone levels? These are rare cases, but sometimes there's an ectopic source. So just keep that in mind. Another very important, crucial part of the diagnosis is measuring growth hormone levels. And of course, that will be elevated. But the problem is growth hormone, sometimes low, sometimes high, so what you do is you also measure something called somatomedin C. And this is released in a constant way. So it's a little bit more accurate. You don't get those fluctuations. Somatomedin C has another name. It's also known as insulin-like growth factor, abbreviated IGF-1. Another very important aspect of the diagnosis of acromegaly is a glucose test. What you do is you give the patient about 75 grams orally of glucose, and then you wait about 90 minutes, and then you measure growth hormone levels. Normally, growth hormone levels will be suppressed. But if a patient has acromegaly, growth hormone levels will stay elevated. So this is a very important test. Finally, one thing left that's important to mention is that acromegaly patients can also develop diabetes due to impaired glucose tolerance. So they will have high blood glucose. In terms of treatment, since it's a tumor, the tumor will be excised surgically, of course. Sometimes radiation is also used to treat. And then there also are medications that can be given to suppress growth hormone levels. And what are these meds? Well, I talked about this at the beginning. They're somatostatin analogs. The name of the medication is octreotide. So keep that in mind. If you remember, somatostatin is just another name for growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So it makes sense that if you can give this as a medication, it will suppress growth hormone secretion. wanted to show you just a couple photos of some famous people that have had either gigantism or acromegaly. This is an individual named Robert Wadlow. And he lived in the United States and he holds the world record for the tallest human that has ever lived. At full height he was 8 feet 11 inches tall. Sadly he passed away at the age of 22 back in 1940 but he still is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the tallest human being to have ever lived. This photo is of a professional wrestler named Andre the Giant and he was originally from France but he was in the US for many years in the professional wrestling leagues 
and Andre the Giant was a individual who had acromegaly. A 56-year-old female comes to your office because she feels swollen all over. You do not notice any signs of edema despite her claim that her rings no longer fit and that she has gone from a shoe size of six to a seven and a half over the past two years. A review of systems reveals that she is sweating more than usual, feels fatigued and often has dull headache and diffuse arthralgias. She denies shortness of breath, chest pain and abdominal symptoms. On exam, she has no joint swelling, erythema or tenderness. No skin abnormalities are noted. This presentation is most consistent with which of the following. So this is a patient that's showing gradual signs of acromegaly. A series of photographs taken of a middle-aged man over a period of two decades demonstrates gradual coarsening of facial features and progressive protrusion of the brows. Upon questioning, the patient reports having to wear larger shoes than he did as a young man, which of the following pair of hormones regulates the hormone responsible for these changes. Well, first of all, what is the hormone responsible for these changes? It's growth hormone. And it comes from the pituitary. Now, what regulates growth hormone? Well, that hormone comes from the hypothalamus. And there's two, actually. There's GHRH, which would increase growth hormone levels, and there's GHIH, which would decrease growth hormone levels. And if you remember, GHIH is known as somatostatin. So the answer to this question is D. A 45-year-old male complains of gradual weight gain over the past several years. His fingers have enlarged so much that he can no longer wear his wedding ring. He sweats more than usual, and in particular, his hands are constantly sweaty. He has also noticed gradual coarsening of his facial features. An MRI reveals the presence of a 1.5 centimeter tumor in the anterior pituitary. Which of the following endocrine abnormalities is likely to be present? All right, well, most likely he has acromegaly. So let's go through these. Decreased plasma growth hormone concentration. Well, that's wrong because in acromegaly you have increased growth hormone. Next one, decreased plasma IGF-1 concentration. IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor, also known as somatomedin C, would be increased. So that's wrong. Decreased plasma insulin concentration. Hmm. We'll come back to that one. Impaired glucose tolerance. Well, we know that's true. Increased suppression of growth hormone secretion with oral glucose. You remember that test? You give glucose and then you wait 90 minutes. If someone has acromegaly, you would have decreased suppression of growth hormone. Growth hormone would not be decreased, it would not be suppressed. So this is actually opposite of what happens in acromegaly. So we're left with C or D. D is the correct choice. C is wrong because in acromegaly, when you have hyperglycemia, the body responds by increasing insulin levels. So C is incorrect. And finally, a 59-year-old male complains of headache and decreasing visual ability. History reveals that the patient has outgrown his pants and shirts within the past year. The patient exhibits a marked overbite. Which of the following is the best method to diagnose this patient? Well, right off the bat, you should know growth hormone and somatomedin C, which is also known as insulin-like growth factor 1. And that would be choice A.